Thanks. The Coming Apocalypse. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Analysis of today's headlines and how Bible prophecy is unfolding before your very eyes. Please welcome now your host, Pastor Paul Begley. Are you serious? Are you serious? Well, this is going to be a powerful time in the Lord. What, what am I losing here? A little too close? Okay. And what a... Oh, let's turn on the... Uh, can I turn on the uh, chat room here at YouTube, all right, real fast? Guys, we're going to have a great broadcast today. I want to welcome everybody here. Pastor Mark Biltz from Washington State, El Shaddai Ministries. He's going to be here. He's the man. He's the author that broke the, uh, the information on the four blood moons. He actually is the one that originated it. Others used it, of course, including myself and many others. I mean, John Hagee even wrote a book on it and used Pastor Mark Biltz's information and even made a documentary, okay? And so we know, that, and they work together, of course. So as you know, the four blood moons, if you study them, and I did, I covered them, and the amount of things that happened during that four blood moon tetrad period was incredible, including Israel did go to war for 50 days, Hamas out of Gaza which is exactly what the prophecy said would happen, as well as a lot of other things that took place. So anyway, the man, the author, Pastor Mark Biltz, will be our guest today as he is going to discuss with me the great American solar eclipse. And uh, we had a conversation last night for about 20 minutes. It was a powerful conversation. And he told me some things he wants to share. It just kind of blew my mind. It's just awesome. So and a lot of the stuff that I've been saying, he is saying as well. I mean, they're matching. Matter of fact, there's been several articles written here recently in the last week on, uh, by different publications, uh, quoting both myself and him, as we're both saying the same thing. This is a warning from God for the United States of America, specifically the United States. This, what, this is part of the reason we're having this sign of the great American solar eclipse. <clears throat> but also, uh, it then leads us right into the Revelation 12 constellation sign, the great wonders in heaven, and there's two wonders in that sign. And so we'll be discussing that as well. And oh, by the way, and that leads us right into Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. When you understand how God has used signs in the Bible, Genesis 1.14, tells you this, and let me just look at it for a second. Genesis 1.14 says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. So from the very creation, God was already setting up apocalyptic signs to help us understand the end times prophecy as well as other reasons. The word seasons is a, in the Hebrew, it means divine appointments, okay? You could say this would be the Lord's feast days. You could say other divine appointments, certainly. Prophetic signs in the heavens. And Jesus said these words. If you want to read it with me, you could go to the book of Luke. We'll go to Luke 21. And of course, Jesus was asked the question. Uh, could they, the disciples went, oh, could you tell us the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. Of course, Jesus goes through a list of things. He said, 
<clears throat> in Luke 21, he said, take heed, verse 8, take heed that you be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, but well, we got enough wars and commotions going on, I can tell you that. Be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. And then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines, excuse me, there shall be earthquakes, shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. All right? And then, then persecution as well comes upon the body of Christ. But before all these, ye shall be laid, they, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. He said, just don't settle it in your hearts what you're going to say, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. Now, he doesn't stop there with the sign. You can skip on down. Verse 20, this is definitely tied to Israel and Jerusalem, which we can confirm in Zechariah chapter 2. Don't touch the apple of God's eye, Zechariah 2, or Zechariah 12. Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling or burdensome stone for all people, okay? And then right here in Luke 21, 20, and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Well, if you study in Matthew 24, 15, you know Jesus said, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever read them understand. Well, Daniel spoke about it in Daniel 9, 27. And he said there would be a covenant with many that would bring about the abomination of desolation. And Paul explained to us what that means when he said, when the, when the Antichrist, when the false, when the Antichrist, the, the wicked one, when the son of perdition is revealed, then Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul said, here's what will happen. Uh, it's going to happen when, the, when, when he walks into the temple of God before the worshipers of God, and he says that he is God. All right? I mean, think about it. This is an incredible situation. Uh, that we're going to watch being revealed. So here we are now. Go to verse 25. Go to verse 25. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, the strength of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. Oh, there's a lot going to go. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and there's no question about it. We're going to be hearing a powerful word today. As Pastor Mark Biltz from Washington State will join us. There's no question, and I hope you've invited people to come be with us. Uh, it's going to be a powerful time. And I want to say hi to everybody who just tuned in with us at Periscope, as well as everybody at YouTube Live, and all of you at publiclyprophecy.com, new live stream, Roku Satellite, and those of you listening on Blog Talk Radio, or if you're on your iPhones and Androids and, 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 and cell phones, and maybe you're saying, Paul, look, uh, I, Paul, sometimes I'm out here, I can't hear the show, I'm working, or I'm doing something, I'm driving, I'm at the supermarket, dial the number! 347-324-5208. That's 347-324-5208. And you can listen no matter where you're at on your cell phone. All right, let's get right into it. The word of the Lord is, is absolutely very clear that there will be apocalyptic signs in the last days. All right, in the last days. Now let's share with you first earthquakes. Check them real fast here. Kind of quiet, but that is, enjoy it. Because with the power of the solar winds that are now starting to inundate the earth, and they're on their way, I'm telling you, I think in this next 72 hours, we may be going to experience potential earthquakes uh, without question, all right? But there has been 21 earthquakes in the last 24 hours, and 
Matter of fact, a 3.3 in Oklahoma, 5.1 Indonesia, 3.0 in the British Virgin Islands, 2.5 in Alaska, 2.8 in Yellowstone, Montana, that super volcano keeps shaking and quaking, and also is a 3.9 earthquake in Cuba. That's right. Very shallow in both Montana and Cuba. There was a 3.6 in California, 3.0 in Puerto Rico, 2.6 in Luther, Oklahoma. There was a 4.8 in Peru, 5.3 Tonga, and that one was very shallow, very shallow in Tonga, 4.4 Chile. There was a 2.7 earthquake in Siverville, Tennessee, and it was only 9.2 kilometers deep. So they felt that one in Siverville, Tennessee. Also, 2.6 Puerto Rico, 3.0 Puerto Rico, 2.9 Lincoln, Montana. Again, in the Yellowstone danger zone of that super volcano. 2.5 Alaska, 2.9 again Lincoln, Montana. Super volcanoes rumbling, 4.7 Japan, 5.1 Japan, and we just had a 4.2 in Chile. But this is still kind of crop. Well, I'm, look at look at look at Yellowstone. Yesterday was Oklahoma. Today it's Yellowstone, and I think that the pressure is building, and it may get worse. All right, it may get worse. As we said, solar winds are blowing at an alarming 724 kilometers per second, and that the Earth has rotated, and now that big sunspot AR2665. Facing the Earth, it's an enormous hole in the sun's atmosphere, leaving a wide open alley for the solar winds that are blowing on the sun to come headed right for the Earth. And uh, the winds are blowing at 724 kilometers per second. Matter of fact, it's anticipated by NOAA that there is an 80% chance of a geomagnetic storm, a G2 class, folks. And with our uh, 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 magnetosphere being so uh, weak and with no protection, with, with a big hole on the sun's atmosphere, we're going to get hit with these solar winds. Just pray, pray, pray that there's not an enormous solar flare release through that hole. Because if, if, we, if we get what happened a few days ago, it's a kill shot. We dodged a huge bullet 10 days ago when that kill shot eruption came roaring out of that sunspot in the opposite direction on the other side of the sun from the earth. Now, it's, now, now here we are. Pray and pray that it doesn't happen to us. Now, the Bible says that God will have an angel. They will come and pour his vial upon the sun. And the sun will become so volatile that it will scorch men with fire. Great heat will come up on the earth. It will scorch men's skin. They will gnaw their tongues for pain and blaspheme God at what's happening to them. All right? So, I mean, I'm just telling you, folks, it's, it's, uh, that's where we're at. Pastor Mark Biltz is going to join us today. Pastor Mark Biltz from Washington State. We're going to talk about the great solar eclipse and the Revelation 12 uh, constellation, the signs in the heavens. He's an expert in this area uh, and, a, and a pro, just a prolific author uh, who brought us the four blood moons, but now has a, a great book out as well. Uh, and so we're going to share more about that in a minute. He, he'll be on the show. He's actually going to be on the Jim Baker show next Tuesday uh, down in Missouri. And uh, you've probably seen him on uh, TVN or some of the other Christian networks out there. He's a guest frequently on some of the television uh, shows. Now, let me share with you some other things going on because we're still got that meteor shower going on. The, uh, the uh, what, do they, what do they call that thing? The Perseid, the Perseid, Perseid meteor shower. You st there's going to be a real, you're going to see a lot more meteors and fireballs in the next few days. Uh, as a matter of fact, BP Earthwatch has a video out about the fact we're going through a comet's debris field. That, that's what we're talking about. And uh, so keep a close eye on that, okay? As uh, That could be a spectacular show out there, actually, in the sky. God's uh, wonderful universe that he created. 
Jesus even said that. Look at that. Look at that. What? That's how many fireballs was in the sky last night. 56 fireballs. You're looking at their different orbital path. And the earth is right there in the center and where everything is intersecting. And that's where the 56 different fireballs approached and broke through, crashing through our earth's atmosphere last night. What? Thank you, Brock. That's a great uh, picture for sure. Uh, so, you know, these meteorites, guys, these fireballs that are going on out there, I mean, what, what can I say? They continue to uh, increase and increase and increase. Asteroids. Matter of fact, we got an asteroid going by the Earth today. Asteroid 2011 CC22. It's going to go whizzing by the Earth, a near-Earth object. It's not going to hit us because it's 15.5 LD from the Earth. But here we go again. They just keep whizzing by, and now you guys know what the big concern is. October the 12th, we have an asteroid called 2012 TC4, and they don't know how close this thing's going to come. As a matter of fact, let me read this article. Uh, for, I read this last night, but I, I feel like I should read it also for today's broadcast. According to NASA incoming asteroid because NASA can't uh, look here's the deal the calculations on the path of the October 12 2017 asteroid 2012 TC4 shortly after it was discovered back in 2012 the Pan Stars Observatory in Hawaii discovered it on October the 5th 2012. That's when we first found out it existed. We only had seven days, and it was going to whiz by the Earth very close. A week later, the asteroid passed the Earth at a distance of only 58,905 miles. That's how close it was. Then we only had seven days to identify it, try to, how big was it, how close is it going by, what's its speed. That's all we had. Then it was gone, Okay. Now, we haven't seen it since, but based on our calculations, we know it's coming back, and it's going to pass by the Earth again on this October 12th. We know how big it is. We know how fast it is, but we don't know how close it's going to be. And they've got uh, astronomers have, haven't seen the asteroid for five years because it's been so distant and so faint, but 2012 ob observations gave them enough information to put the Earth in the clear for at least five years. However, the lack of further observations hasn't let scientists precisely define the asteroid's orbit, although they're confident, they say, that there's no danger of a collision. Okay, but let's read on. In fact, astronomers believe the space rock will more likely pass by about 170,000 miles from the Earth, or two-thirds the Earth's moon distance. If, however, the asteroid 2012 TC4 sweeps past us at the closest possible distance, the flyby would be significantly closer than the orbit of the TV and communication satellites, which the orbit Earth at 22,300 miles. And BP Earthwatch shared that with us and showed us that. Brock, you got that uh, diagram? Okay. And that thing showed he showed us that it was that according to the instruments that NASA has had on their website they're anticipating it get coming by around 4000 miles from the earth way inside that ring of the satellite orbit but let me read on to what NASA is saying yesterday the international collaboration described by the uh, UA on uh, today will help scientists determine the asteroid orbit more precisely. Get this, the Lunar and Planeta Planetary Laboratories at UA is leading the campaign to reacquire 2012 TC4. In other words, even now, we are not tracking this asteroid. We, no one has seen it yet. Okay? Can't see it yet. So what NASA has done is they built an international collaboration. Every observatory 
on this planet is searching for asteroid 2012 TC4 right now. They're all looking from every direction. Now, the reason is as soon as they spot it, they got to do some quick calculations. They're bringing in the best mathematicians, the best physicists, the astronomers are in there. I'm talking worldwide. Because once they identify it, they got to quickly figure out how close is this thing coming. Now, if you remember, BP Earthwatch said that we will probably spot it around October 1st, giving us maybe 12 days to analyze this thing. Uh, just to be sure we're not on a collision course. Now, what's amazing about it is what, uh, what NASA is saying. They're saying it's going to, how close is it going to come? Well, it could be a close shave for the Earth. But then they turn around and say, but don't worry about it. It's definitely not going to hit us. Yet, they don't know its path. They haven't seen it in five years. They only had seven days to study it. They don't know if it's going to go by us at 170,000 miles or 4,000 miles. Uh, they have all kinds of different people working on this. Uh, but there's no question, it is a, it's an event. It is an approaching asteroid. And uh, we're not going to know until it gets a little closer. Uh, I'm just telling you now, they don't know. And I'm not throwing NASA under the bus, never a straight answer. I'm not doing that. There's a lot of good people that work there at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory. I'm not doing that. In Pasadena, California, I'm not going to do that. Good people are trying, but but they don't know exactly. They they are hopeful that the information that they have, the experts say, even though they can't yet predict exactly how close it will come, they're certain it will fly by at a safe distance. But the safe distance could be very close shade. This is their words. With the space rock passing no closer than 4,200 miles, from our planet. At least that's the hope. Well, we'll wait and see. And as it gets closer, I believe it's the third sign of this uh, during these feast days. So the first one is this great solar American eclipse, the great American solar eclipse. Oh, and by the way, you know how many days it was from the first blood moon to this solar eclipse? Exactly 1,260 days which is in your Bible, all right? It's mentioned twice in your Bible, in Daniel and also Revelation. So there's something going on here. This is definitely a sign of the end times. We're going to continue to keep, I mean, we have to stay on top of the story. There's no question about it. It is a real deal. And then we got to deal with the mark of the beast. What? Isn't it amazing that at the same time <clears throat> that we're dealing with this, now, we talked about this last week, but we got to talk about it again because they have done it. That Wisconsin company called the Three Square Market, they have put the RFID microchip in 50 of their employees. 50 of their employees. Including the CEO of the company, his wife, and kids. And they gleefully, gleefully accepted this microchip, this RFID microchip. Uh, it goes in the right hand between your thumb and your first finger right in here, okay, right in there. And its capabilities, it's a GPS. It has the ability to, as a debit card, and it will work on the vending machines inside that company. It will, open, it will let the employees in the gate and in the building through locked doors. It will tur turn their individual computers on. And it is, uh, they are, have already done it. There's 50 people working at this company, and they volunteered to do it, and they gleefully did it. Now, this microchip not only could be put here in your hand, but it actually could go right above your brow, right in there in your forehead, okay? They're not putting them in the forehead because they want to put them in the right hand, but it could go right there, okay? And it's about the size of a grain of rice. 
And so it's just amazing to me how that we're living in this time that I, I, as I grew up as a kid, I heard about the mark of the beast, you know, and I'm not saying that this is the mark of the beast. I'm saying this is a technology that could be used. It could be used for the mark of the beast. It's got to be something. And let me, you say, well, pastor, it has nothing to do with a microchip or anything like that. It has to do with the condition of the heart. I agree with you. It has to do with the condition of the heart. You have to make a decision to do it. But it does say in Revelation that those that took the mark got grievous sores in their body or on their body. And if you take a microchip and put it in, uh, and this has been done before, people have tested it, it can get infected and create a major, grievous, nasty sore. Okay? And the Bible says that is what's going to happen to those that take this mark. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's an RFID microchip. It could be a tattoo. It could be a nano chip. There's all kinds of different technologies. But isn't it something that this is the first American company where the employees have been microchipped and is, that is their uh, pass to get into work? Now, I know the military has been using this. I know they have. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> many of you with pets also have had your pets, your pets microchipped. All right. And we know that RFID microchips have been used in clothing, and that microchips are being used in your cell phone. You can go, if you lose your cell phone, you can go online, type in your phone, and the, the computer will tell you where your phone is. If you say, computer, I lost my phone, the, the computer will tell you where your phone is. All right. So, I mean, you got to understand. And look how we're attached to the phone. I mean, it's got to be around us all the time, we got to have it in our hand. Uh, you know, we can't go anywhere. We need it. We can, we can watch videos. We can communicate. We can text. We can make payments. We can get, if you get on a plane, it can be your boarding pass. Uh, I mean, it, it can now be, uh, I was just talking to Mary Jane. She works for Hilton. She's a member of our online church. She said that just pretty soon, all, all keys to your room will be on your phone. So when you check in, your phone will get the the, the little barcode will come on your phone. That will be your room key. You walk up to your room, just lift your phone up, boom, the door opens. It won't work on any other door, just yours. Matter of fact, you won't even have to go to the front desk because you can register for your hotel room from your computer at home. When you get there, just go past the desk. Your key's already locked in on your phone. Just walk to your room, boom. You won't even need to go. You won't have to go back down and check out and turn the key in. Because why? Because they'll send the receipt, your bill, they'll send it back to you on an email. They don't even need by the front desk. You see what I'm saying? I mean, unless you, you didn't, take your, didn't bring your toothpaste. What? You forgot your toothbrush or something, you might need help at the front desk. But do you see where we're going? Um, so just get used to the fact, technology. And that's why I wrote the book, Mark of the Beast, R-F-I-D. It's only at my website, and I can tell you, today, I was, I, when I saw that this company had done this, when I saw they had done this, I, I went back into the storage room there, got my book, brought it back in here, started looking at it, and I said, oh, my Lord, everything, I mean, just about everything I wrote in here is coming to pass. Matter of fact, the Hagmans read this book, and that was two years ago, and said that 13 things in the book had already come to pass since I wrote it. And I need to go back and read this book again because, and, and it would be really fun to do, probably take a, a yellow highlighter and read it again, how many things written in this book, which was supposed to be a novel, how many of them now have come to pass, including little drones made like insects that they would fly in and see things. I wrote that in there before it was happening, and a lot more. Also, I wrote, I wrote that the Pope was going to die. What? No, excuse me. I wrote he was going to resign. He didn't die, and he resigned. So, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I think that the Holy Spirit, I know. I should say sometimes. I know the Lord. That's why a lot of books out there that people write, you'll read them, especially if they're novels. A lot of the stuff comes to pass because as the author is writing it, the Holy Spirit is guiding them. And, and all of a sudden, there's nuggets everywhere. All right? It just, it's incredible. I'm just blown away by it. But uh, 
Three Square Market, that's the name of the company in Wisconsin. That's the name of the company in Wisconsin that has implemented the RFID. Mark Bilt is going to join us in a few minutes. We're going to talk about the great American solar eclipse and Revelation 12, how it's linked to biblical prophecy, how it's tied to the law of Moses even, and is carried over. It's because we know that the Old Testament was a law. We know that that was a shadow of things to come. Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law. I come to fulfill the law, the feast. Jesus was the Passover lamb. Jesus was the unleavened bread. Jesus was the first fruits of the resurrection. Jesus was the Holy Ghost baptizer. I mean, that's four out of seven feasts right there. And, and, and I'm telling you right now, folks, we are living in the days that the Bible said prophetic events will take place. There's no question about it. And, oh, by the way, we got two tropical storms that have formed down in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, they're not hurricanes yet. They're not even tropical storms with names. They're what's called tropical depressions. But they have, they have started. And there you can see their path coming. It looks uh, one is now already in, entering into the Caribbean islands, coming right up. No doubt it's going to go right into the Gulf of Mexico. Maybe it shoots left and just goes across the Yucatan Peninsula there in Mexico. I don't know. But the other one, if you take a look at it, it's coming right in behind it. And either one of these could swing right up into the Gulf of Mexico, or maybe the one way in the back there. Maybe it's keeps hooking and ends up hitting the East Coast. And this is still early. A week from now, could be a whole new ball game for the United States of America. We need to keep a close eye on what's going on there. Uh, those tropical depressions, two of them back to back. I mean, are you serious? I got some coffee when I see that stuff because I realized that uh, the Bible says there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity. The sea, the waves, roaring. Men's hearts fail in them for fear. They shouldn't, but they do. Men's hearts will fail them for fear, looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the power of heaven shall be shaken. Luke 21, 25 through 28. Then shall they see the Son of Man. Coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head. Your redemption's drawing nigh. Are you serious? Oh, I'm glad you put that picture up there, the rainbow and all the, you know, Pastor Steve Leidig, we talked to him last night on the show last night, great show. We had 22 people saved last night that we know of, 15 yesterday in the live broadcast here. And we see that people are coming to Jesus Christ. But Pastor Steve had had a vision a month ago, and he shared it in Orlando, where he saw himself, he had built an ark, and he was inside the ark. And the door was open, and he was pleading for people to get in. It was, it was an ark. And now this train derailment. And I was telling him, I said, Pastor, do you have that footage, Brock? No. Uh, I was telling Pastor uh, Steve, I said, look, that train derailment on, that, uh, on the uh, videotape of the surveillance, this thing, the, these, it, the, it was an explosion. It was not a derailment and then a fire. It exploded. It exploded, and it exploded right on the intersection of the road and the railroad track. And it only and it exploded just as the six most dangerous cars was going over on the track right there. And this is 178 cars on this track. 50 of the freight cars were empty, but six possessed liquid petroleum, uh, uh, propane. Um, for it, uh, acids and, 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 and we don't even know what all because they still won't let nobody in there matter of fact even the authorities won't even go in there and uh, the, the, uh, 
the representatives from the CSX Railroad said this is the worst train derailment they've ever had in years. 32 cars derailed, but the six worst cars exploded on fire, crashed into people's homes. Miracle, nobody's been killed. It's an absolute insane miracle. It's, it's the grace of God. Even, matter of fact, when that train went through that one house and cut it in half, the man and woman were in bed. The train, when it stopped their house, half their house was destroyed, and the train was setting 10 foot from the foot of their bed. The rail car was. They got up. They ran out of there. Later that day, they went down to Tri-State Ministries Church, where Pastor Steve is, and the man gave his life to Jesus Christ. He got a wake-up call. Are you serious? A freight train. But listen, now all the people are gathering at, at, at uh, uh, Tri-State Ministries, and Heidi said, oh, my Lord, it's come to pass. The dream he had, it has happened. His church has become the ark of the community, and the people are coming everywhere. And he said to me on the phone last night, he said, Pastor Paul, when you get here on September 23rd and 24th, this community will be so primed and ready for revival. And he said, we're getting connections with everybody in town, and we're reaching out to them. And, of course, the, the Red Cross and the uh, Salvation Armies came there and set up all the uh, and, and the, and the uh, railroad people are paying for everybody's meals in the restaurants and all the hotel rooms, all that. But still, the people are, when you're not in your own home, it's, it's still, it's very chaotic. And I'm glad that Tri-State Ministries is the place that's, that's able to take care of these things. And so, um, folks, I'm telling you, it, it's incredible. It's incredible what's been going on. It really, really is. Let me tell you something else that's happening here. Um, did you see what the West Virginia's governor, Jim Justice, what? He showed up at the President Donald Trump rally in Huntington, West Virginia, where thousands of people were gathered. There he is, the West Virginia governor, Jim Justice, and he walked up on the stage and declared that he could no longer serve the people of West Virginia as a Democrat. He was switching to Republican. I mean, when's the last time you've seen a governor switch from the Democrat to, there he is, shaking hands with President Donald Trump and joining the Republican Party on the spot. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. It's, it has driven the mainstream, lamestream, fake news media. It has driven them insane. They have lost their minds over this because they keep talking about how Trump is losing his momentum, how his poll numbers are bad, how America is giving up, how he can't get this done. Well, he can't get anything done because the Congress won't do what, he, what they need to do. It's not his. He can't make laws on his own. He's doing the best he can with executive orders. He has to undo all of Obama's horrific executive orders. Then he has to write some that makes sense. And when he does, guess what? The corrupt judicial system blocks him. So he's, he's fighting the Democrats. He's fighting the media. He's fighting in the courts. He's fighting the demons in hell. The swamp is so slimy and slippery and, 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 and sleazy, but there's so many leaks in Washington, you'd think the swamp would go dry. But it don't. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. West Virginia Governor Jim Justice. What? Mm. Coffee's delicious this morning. It really is. Demon possessions are on the rise. Even the psychiatrist and the scientific community knows this. And they don't know what to do. Now, here's one of the things. Dr. Lester Summerall, when he taught on demonology, said there's a lot of demon oppression and there is demon infestations of homes and buildings and territories. And there's principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. But actual demon possession is still quite uh, rare, but it does happen. But in the last days, there's been an increase in demonic possession. And so much so that the psych wards, and the, uh, and the emergency rooms and the hospitals and the violent crimes and the, and the, uh, and the people, the zombie apocalyptic type stuff where people are biting people's 
and, and, and superhuman strength and, and the characteristics of Legion, really, has been going on everywhere. I actually want to read for you an article because what the there's, there is, matter of fact, the, ex, the number of exorcists or people working in deliverance ministries has increased tenfold in the last 20 years trying to keep up with all of these demonic activities, even the media. You got people stripping down naked. You got a superhuman strength running into homes, biting people, eating people's face, eating their intestines. I mean, it's unbelievable. In my book, Zombie Apocalypse, I mean, I documented 35 actual accounts of demonic possession similar to Legion. I mean, seriously, very similar to Legion. And that's why I said zombie apocalypse, the return of Legion. Demons are loose. Well, even the, uh, now even the scientific community is admitting that not everything is um, an emotional disorder. Not everybody has got a psychiatric or psychological problem. That some of this is demonic demon spirits and if there's demon spirits then that means there's a devil and if there's a devil then that means there's a god and so this is part of the situation somebody said they've lost the feed entirely uh let me just double check here make sure everybody's okay no i got everything working just great they must have. i want to welcome all almost 1300 of you have gathered live at youtube and uh, we just want to welcome all of you here today uh, let me read to you an article here that, the, that has just come out called Man of Science. Now, this is actually by CNN, believe it or not, doing some investigative research. A small group of nuns and priests met a woman in the chapel of a house back in June. Though it was warm outside, there was a palpable chill settling in the room. As the priest began to pray, the woman slipped into a trance, and then she snapped to life. She spoke in multiple voices. One was a deep, masculine voice. Another was a high-pitched voice. A third one spoke in Latin only. And when someone secretly sprinkled some ordinary water on her, she didn't react. But when they sprinkled holy water on her, she screamed in pain. Leave her alone, you blanking priest, she said. Stop, you whores. You'll be sorry. Um, now, you've probably seen some of this kind of stuff before in Hollywood movies. A soul corrupted by Satan, a priest waving a crucifix, or a snarling woman. Movies and books have mimicked these exorcisms so often that they become cliches. But this was an actual exorcism that the CNN reporter was at and included a character not normally seen in traditional drive out of the drive the devil out of the script movie. Dr. Richard Gallagher uh, is an Ivy League educated board certified there he is psychiatrist who teaches at Columbia University and New York Medical College. He was part of a team that tried to help the woman. Fight Satan's demons wasn't part of Gallagher's career plan while studying medicine at Yale University. He knew about biblical accounts of demonic possession. We've been disconnected. Hang on a second. I'm still on blog talk. Uh, is it completely down, Brock, or just very low? So I'm showing very low. It may come back. Give it one second. Now I'm back up. Okay, we're still rolling. Everybody refresh a little bit. You may need, you may need to refresh. We're getting a little bit of buffering. Pray that this uh, will quickly solve, okay? A little bit of buffering going on. Uh, hang on one second. You're all right? Everybody hang in there. Hang in there. Well, let me see where we're at here. Are we alive? 
Dr. Mark Biltz is going to join us. Rock, are we dead or are I think we're still on showing very low. Yeah, make sure she isn't on. Uh, I'll check and make sure we don't have any computer around here. We're still rolling. We're still rolling. So guys, just hang on a second. I'm going to. Uh, well, maybe we have somebody on the internet. Um, we could get them off of it real quick here. And uh, just to make sure that's not the issue. Yeah, we're we're offline now, Brock. We're offline. Brock, wait a minute. This is very low. Block Talk is still working. Wait a minute. You think so? Okay, we're going to shut down for about three minutes. We'll be right back. Try to regather internet speed. If you're on Blog Talk, just hang on. Gather, re regroup here. I'm not here for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're restarting. Does it show you're off and going? Okay, so we're we're restarting that. We're restarting here. Our guest will be there. We go. We're starting to get a good, starting to get a good feed. Uh, I think I'm I'm showing I'm I'm good. I'm showing I'm good right now. Okay, it went offline. You're right. It's it's not the machine's fault. Uh, we have a direct internet. Uh, we, are we right into? Uh, It's, the crowd is huge. Uh, it was huge. It's down a little bit right now because we lost it. But uh, but we didn't lose the internet connection. So this has to be live stream, Brock, because our internet's high. Yeah, it's it's uh, the internet is is high. So it's live streams website. Okay. Hopefully they'll they'll pull it together over there. But we're seeing we're struggling at live stream. Blog talk is working perfect, and new live stream, of course, is going down as well because it's all run, Periscope. They're all running through the same thing. So I'm at Blog Talk Radio. We're Brock's working on this. It's not his fault. We can see that our internet connection is sky high. It is coming from the server at Blog Talk. Excuse me, at live stream new live stream, so we're hoping that we can get that reconnected and be able to uh, to move forward here. So just hang on a second. Um, wow, you think they're just fighting us because of what we're going to talk about? I'm hoping not. So we got some prayer warriors out there. Still on there, Brock? And so... We're supposed to pick up Mark Biltz here in a few minutes. I actually got to go ahead and get the Skype ready. There it is. He'll be joining us in 11 minutes. Let's see if we can work through this problem in the next 11 minutes before we get him on. Technology, and is it censorship? I just wonder. Sometimes I get I get on certain subjects and it goes down. And uh, you know, I'm today I'm talking demon possession. I guess maybe the the demons don't like it. I don't know. What? Maybe it's the demons in hell that well, you know who is the principality and the power of the air? It's Lucifer. All right, I'll be back up. Hang in everybody. It's gonna be a great interview here. And uh, we're just praying. Get this is a good time to get the tea dot com. It's really a good time to get the tea dot com. All right. Uh, in the midst of all this, I'm drinking coffee right now. I'm drinking get the tea last night. Um. Anyway, yeah, Ryan McMullen at his website get the tea dot com. It is good tea, and actually, 
uh, you might find it very enjoyable. Do you think you need to shut all the way down and come back up? No, because it's it's not it's not the machine. It's not that. It's the feed. Um. Do you want to go upstairs? Are they on? Is uh, are anybody on the internet upstairs? I don't think. What about Leanne? Okay. Okay. Hang with me, everybody, as we're working on it uh, right now. And uh, I, I used to get real frustrated about these things. I quit doing that. God said, just relax. I'm under, it's all under control, Paul. It's all under control. You're in a battle. You're in this thing for the long haul. Anytime you get 15 people saved during the, in the day show and 22 at night and 41 the night before, you know, you know that people are coming to Christ, you know the devil is not happy, all right? So talking about those demons didn't, didn't. <laughs> oh, man, all right? So anyway, Mark Bill's supposed to join us in a few minutes. We hope that we have made the connection and that everything's going to be all right. Um, praying and believing God that everything is going to uh, clear up here in time. And... Uh, so lean on me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. You know, his blog talk doesn't go out. It won't be long that you're going to need somebody to lean. On. Yep, yep, that's right. That is exactly right. Periscope is down. YouTube is down. New live stream is down. But our friends at Blog Talk Radio remain connected. And we thank God for that. There's 144 of you that are on the cell phones, just cell phones. I looked at the lines, 146 now, still on the cell phone. We should be back live on all of the networks again. We're praying that the feed will strengthen as we get ready to bring Mark Biltz on in the next seven minutes. We are praying that the feed will strengthen, all right? And, um, yeah, yeah, pray. We had no problem for 45 minutes, bro. And I don't know if we're getting CMEs because you know that the sun has turned. I don't know if is this was censorship because we were on the subject of demons. You know, I just don't know. Yeah. And so as Ms. ZD is putting in the chat rooms the link to Blog Talk Radio. So if you folks click on that link, you can listen to this live on Blog Talk. And, of course, you can keep your computer window open so that if the Internet gets through this little window of whatever this is, this interference, you know, it could, it could adjust and, and uh, whatever is causing the interference could, could change. Uh, and we're praying that it does. But meanwhile, if you go to Blog Talk Radio, you'll be able to hear it. There is no problem at Blog Talk Radio, all right, because it's running on a different – it's not running through the main system, and there's no problem with the Internet connection. So it's working just fine. We'll be bringing, Bart, uh, we'll be bringing on Pastor Mark Biltz in about five minutes, and uh, – you will be able to hear this interview with him on Blog Talk for sure. So you might want to make that um, connection now. You might say, Pastor, oh, don't tell me. You might say, Pastor, um, I can't get on Blog Talk. I'm on a phone. Then dial the number, 347-324-5208. I see 162 people have done this. Dial this number, 347-324-5208. 5208 restarting. So Brock is restarting the entire program. Hopefully it will come back up and he'll get a signal. He'll get a uh, get the video back rolling.
Meanwhile, we are just going to kind of patiently wait over here at Block Talk Radio as we will be bringing Pastor Mark Biltz on the radio broadcast as Brock will work, continue to work on trying to get... Okay, here comes Pastor Mark right now. Pastor Mark. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing? Hey, doing well. How about you? Doing great. Let me turn your volume up here a little louder for everybody. Just one second here. Are you there? Wait a minute. Are you there, Pastor? I'm here. I, I'm here. All right. All I right. hear myself echo. You no, are? I don't. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, it's gone. Okay. That's probably on your on your end. You should be okay. Okay. All right. Folks, we have with us Pastor Mark Biltz from Washington State. He actually uh, is senior pastor, ministry, El Shaddai Ministries. And a lot of you folks may know that he is, of course, the original author of the Four Blood Moons, and uh, which was fascinating. And it just wasn't Four Blood Moons, folks. The Four Blood Moon Tetrad that was connected to four high Jewish feast days. And can we just touch on that a minute before we move into the solar eclipse, Pastor Mark? Uh, what during that four blood moon period? What are some of the things you observed prophetically? <clears throat> My goodness, like you said, the very first thing to have these fall on the biblical feast days, Passover and Tabernacles, has been incredible. And uh, what I had told everyone back then was nothing would happen on those days as much as they were signs of the chaos that was to come. And when you see over the last three years, the chaos, I mean, with ISIS, uh, with all of these terrorist attacks, uh, look what's going on with North Korea, look what's going on with Syria in Israel. Uh, The world literally is in a a complete time of chaos. Right. And that 50-day war also uh, happened, I think, yes, right exactly. in Israel, yes. right? Exactly. And I really believe back then and that these were just like if a bridge is out. They don't put the sign that the bridge is out where the bridge is out. They give you a mile or two warning. Well, these were warnings, I believe, at the time for what was going to happen in 2017 and 2018, which is the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem. And, of course, the 70th anniversary of Israel becoming a nation. So I really believe that those were signs uh, of what is coming. Exactly. And I agree with you 100% because every time that these blood moons took place, they were always signs and and always an indication. And they were tied to Israel and, or the Middle East and anybody connected to Israel. And, you know, the United States, we play such a major role in the, first of all, the existence of the rebirth of Israel and helping protect or be a part of that relationship, don't we? Oh, for sure, for sure. And uh, we need to keep that relationship because, as it says in Joel, God's going to come against every nation that tries to divide the land of Israel. Amen, amen, and, and you're right. And matter of fact, I think Zechariah 2 says, you're not to touch the apple of God's eye. And <laughs> we've seen everybody take a shot at them just about. Oh, for sure. Uh, But the amazing thing to me is how uh, detailed God is. God created the sun and the moon and the stars, it says, for the Moedim. You know, it says seasons in English, but that's such a wrong translation. He literally created, he says in Genesis 1.14, the sun, the moon, and the stars for signals, for signs. And then in Luke, I think, 21.25, the Lord says there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And then look, here we have these four blood moons. We got the total solar eclipse. We got the Revelation 12 sign of the stars. We have all three. What more can you ask for? I mean, this is amazing because you're right. The four blood moons. Now we got the solar eclipse in the sun. And then uh, the constellation, the Revelation 12 constellation on September 23rd. Uh, This is just incredible. Uh, th- this is right out of the pages of the book of Joel. This, th- this is the last days when he said he would, you know, the, the sun, the moon, the stars, and blood, and fire, and pillars of smoke. So that kind of thought, when I seen blood, fire, and pillars of smoke, I immediately thought of war, um, you know. Right. 
So let's talk a little bit about this now. This, the, the great American solar eclipse, it's, it's starting, it, it's going to happen on August 21st, which just happens to be my wife and I's 35th anniversary, okay? Well, congratulations. <laughs> and also, my birthday was uh, December 21st, 2012. That was supposed to be the end of the world with the Mayans. I, <laughs> I, I don't think God uses the Mayan calendar. No, he doesn't. He doesn't care about it. I mean, or Y2K for that matter. Um, but anyway, tell us a little bit about this. What do you see? This is a total solar eclipse that's starting you know, around the coast of Oregon. I, I, what I saw was right about the Cascadia fault line. And I'm also seeing that the moment that it begins is the exact moment the sun sets in Jerusalem. And that was... When I saw that last night doing some research, I said, wait a minute. Uh, let me just throw that one at Pastor Mark. So tell us, it's going to begin. What do you see God saying in this eclipse over America? Well, let me, let me start with this. I think what people need to realize is how important it is to be on God's calendar as far as understanding when these things occur. Uh, the month of the lull, the Jewish months always begin with the new moon. And you can only have a total solar eclipse on a new moon. And here we have, uh, right at the first of a lull, this total solar eclipse. Uh, many of the listeners may not know that it was at the first of a lull that Jonah went and preached repentance to Nineveh for four days until Yom Kippur. And it's also a low one is when Moses ascended the mount for 40 days. Uh, the second time uh, when the commandments were had been broken because of the golden calf, and he, he's trying to make re, uh, atonement for the nation of Israel. That nation is trying to repent over the sin of the golden calf. Same day, same 40 days. It's also the same 40 days Yeshua went into the wilderness to be tested, coming out on Yom Kippur. So this 40-day time frame is absolutely huge. And one of the things that also uh, your listeners may not be aware of we read the Jonah story in Nineveh, uh, and, you know, Nineveh just repents. Well, believe me, God had to prepare the ground so when Jonah came, they would be repentant. And most people don't know history, but they found these cuneiform tablets that talks about the time of Jonah. And it says basically three years uh, before Jonah came, uh, there was a plague that hit Nineveh. It was a serious plague. It was just horrible. People were dying all over the place. The next year was the Civil War, uh, all this infighting, probably trying to blame who caused the plague. The next year, there was another plague. And then the next year, there was a total solar eclipse that went directly over Nineveh. And it was a month later after the total solar eclipse that Jonah shows up in Nineveh. And, of course, they're going to repent. God had already prepared the ground. Wow. And so, yeah. And so that's what's incredible. Unless you know the story, the background, you don't realize how important uh, this total solar eclipse was to the Ninevites and their 40 days of repentance. And I find it interesting that the solar eclipse of the United States is also during this same time frame. And uh, historically, people also don't know. See, the sun represents the nations because they go by the solar calendar. That's right. That's right. And the moon represents Israel, okay, because right. their months are based on the moon. Right. And so a total solar eclipse represents possible judgment coming on the nations. Well, guess what? World War I started with the total solar eclipse going over Eastern Europe and over the Ottoman Empire. And what happens? The Eastern Europe's involved in World War I. The Ottoman Empire is destroyed and no more. And, wow. Uh, at the end of World War I, the U.S. got involved late in the war, but uh, toward the, I don't know, last quarter of it, whatever, uh, the very uh, time when the U.S. suffered their worst casualties, there was a total solar eclipse almost identical to the path this year going over the United States as well. So uh, when we begin to understand the timing of this on the biblical calendar, which is why people need to understand God is a daytimer. And that's how we know historically when things happen, if they have importance or not, by the dating of uh, the Bible calendar. Wow, folks. Uh, this is Pastor Mark Biltz, El Shaddai Ministries out of Washington State. You may have seen him on the Jim Baker Show. I understand you're going to be on the Jim Baker Show next week. I, th I think yes. I saw that. And that's Tuesday. 
And, uh, and I'm actually going to be uh, down there with uh, Happy Caldwell down there in uh, Arkansas on his show, uh, same day. Kind of cool. And I was thinking, That's great. yeah, down in the same neighborhood. But Pastor Mark uh, has a book out. Brock will put it on the screen there, God's Day Timer, in which he breaks down for you uh, all of these different signs in the heavens and how they relate to the Lord's feast days and certain uh, seasons and times of the year that is so so important to us as believers. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks will say, well, the law, that was in the Old Testament. Pastor Begley, you know, that's over with. I'm saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jesus didn't come to do away with it. He came to fulfill it. Yeshua uh, certainly knew that, and that's why he never broke the law any time during his three years of ministry. Yeshua knew he needed to fulfill it right up to the very feast. I mean, he is the Passover lamb. He was the, uh, the unleavened bread. He uh, uh, is the first fruits of the resurrection. He is the Holy Ghost baptizer. I mean, he's going to fulfill these, these feasts. And so God is showing us, folks, prophetically through these signs and visions and through these prophetic uh, constellation alignments. All of this is not by chance, not by accident. I mean, that's insane. It, it is a, there is truly a God. I mean, many of you are listening all over the world. You may say, I'm still not sure if there's a God or not. Get Pastor Mark's book. God's uh, day timer. And if you don't believe there's a God, then the, there's nothing else I can do for you at that point. I mean, Pastor, am I right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, this, you know, one of the most interesting things, listen to this. This is from Haggai chapter 1, verse 1 through 4. And it says, God is speaking to Haggai, and it says it was in the second year of Darius the king. It says, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month. You know when that is? That's the first of a lull. That's the same day as this solar eclipse coming. God is trying to speak to his own people. Haggai 1, 1 through 4. Wow. And listen to this. It says, this is what the Lord of hosts says. These people, in other words, God's people say, the time hasn't come yet. The time for the Lord's house to be built. And then the word of the Lord comes to Haggai, and he says, look, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your panel houses while this house lies waste? So here, it's on the first of a low. God is speaking to his own people, and they don't know what time it is. Amazing. So we, earlier you said in the interview, I, I wrote these down quickly, that uh, this, this same day that this solar eclipse is going to happen in America is the same day that Moses went up on Mount Sinai to receive the, the word of the Lord. And it's when he went up the second time, second right, time. to get the new set of tablets coming down on Yom Kippur saying atonement's been made. Yes, okay, the second time he went up to get those. And also it's the same day that Christ went into the wilderness for his 40 days of fasting and prayer. Am I right? Yes, and when Jonah went to Nineveh, the same 40-day time frame. So this time frame is a time of testing and a time for repentance. And, and, and then also, you're saying it's the same day that God speaks to the prophet Haggai and says, look, it's time to get the, the children of Israel have got to get their house in order. It's time. Look, look, at they're living lux very well personally, but look at the house of God. It's falling apart. It's, it's decaying. You've neglected my house. I mean, this is unbelievable. And you're saying that's the same day that this, yeah. this that the solar eclipse. It is because it's the 40 days of repentance at Zilu. And we know it's going to lead us right into the Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, in 40 days. So is this a sign for America? Now, to, to repent, there's some things that culturally, there's some things that's been going on in this country that absolutely is not pleasing to God. I'm not talking about every individual. I'm talking about a nation as a whole. Pastor, am, are we right? Oh, definitely right. Definitely right. I mean, folks, the abortion issue... America has not addressed it. Let's face it. The, the redefinition of marriage, we have not addressed it. The transgender agenda, public schools, we could go on and on and on with different social issues that we absolutely cannot ignore. And I think when we go, as we go forward, God is saying, here's your time. So you're saying when Jonah showed up there at Nineveh, there'd already been a plague one year, a civil war the next year, another plague the next year, and then the sign of Jonah was he. So he comes in there preaching, I guess. And that total solar eclipse happened. <laughs> he comes, he's, days later. he's pointing up to the sky and saying, I'm telling you, God's going to destroy this city in 40 days if you don't repent. 
Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, folks, Pastor Mark Biltz is with us. El Shaddai Ministries, Washington State. Uh, you know, I love watching your uh, YouTube videos. A lot of his sermons are on YouTube, guys. You can find them. You know, he does live streaming at his website also. And he's on television. He guest speaks a lot. And um, this is incredible. So let's walk with me for a minute. All right. So America's getting a, a call to repentance. Uh, we're getting a warning. I don't know what will happen to us. I guess it has to do a lot with what goes on. But should we be real awake to the things that might be going to happen during that 40 days? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, the, the problem with the, the church of Laodicea, they were sound asleep a lot. Here, Abraham, he was interceding. He was praying. He represents the praying church. But then Lot represents the sleeping church. And uh, what's interesting, Lot Lot is his name in Hebrew. But his, in the ancient picture language that was used when his name was written, they didn't use modern Hebrew. They used the ancient Hebrew. And the first letter, uh, remember, Lot thought he had some kind of authority because he sat in the gate of Sodom. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, the Lamed is the first letter of Lot, and it represents a staff or authority. Well, the next letter is the Vav, which is like a connector that connects two thoughts. Well, then the T is the Tet, which is the serpent. So Lot gives his authority over to the serpent. That's Whoa. what his name meant in the picture. Whoa! And it, and it's almost like the church. If they're going to be like Lot and just give their authority over to the serpent, are they going to be like Abraham and interceding and praying for a nation? Folks, we've got – this is why we can't just sit back and say, well, I just hope things work out. The church has a responsibility. Every one of you that are called by the name of the Lord, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. He said, I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive the sin. I'll heal the land. This is our responsibility. We've got to step up to the plate. And your watchmen on the wall, Pastor Biltz and others, the reason they're proclaiming this and crying loud and sparing not is because they can see the sword coming. Let's talk about the Ottoman Empire. You brought up such a great a point that during World War I, again, another total solar eclipse that went across Europe and Turkey or, or parts of the yeah, Ottoman Empire. That's right. You know exactly. what? You know what the Ottoman Empire did? They slaughtered the um, Armenian Christians during this yes. time. Yes. And the Ottoman Empire then fell and has never risen again. And as far as knowing the timing, you know, and knowing what time it is, uh, people ask, well, you know, uh, when Yeshua said this generation won't pass away, well, how long is the generation? Well, get a load of this. I mean, some people say it's 50, some 70, some 100, some 120. Well, get a load of this. We know in Genesis 6, 3, that the Lord told Noah, my spirit will not strive with men forever because he's also flesh, but his days will only be 120 years. In other words, Noah had 120 years to build the ark. And 120 years from the warning, uh, it was over. Well, guess what? Exactly. Here it is, 2017. It was exactly 120 years ago was the first Zionist Congress declaring by Theodore Herzl yep. that there needed to be a nation of Israel. Yep. And that happened uh, exactly 120 years ago. Like, we've been given a 120-year warning. And guess when the first Zionist Congress took place? In Basel, Switzerland, you know? Yeah. It was on August 29th, 1897. Yep. Exactly 120 years ago, it was the first of the lull. The same day. What? Now, I didn't know that. I knew the 1997. Yeah, I, and no, I it's the first of all. Are you serious? I mean, that's an are you serious for sure. I mean, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I know about the, you know, the Belfort Declaration in 1917. Okay. Well, guess when that took place. Don't, don't. When? That, the, 100 years ago. Right. It was on November 2nd, which was the 17th of Heshbon, the same day as Noah's flood began. And it's as of the days of Noah. No! So, so, yeah. the, so the rebirth of Israel as a nation, uh, and the, and the first Zionist Congress meeting on August the twenty ninth, nineteen excuse me, eighteen ninety seven. Uh, today is, I mean, we're coming up on August twenty ninth, night uh, two thousand seventeen will be the one hundred twentieth year. That's how long Noah built the ark. Yeah. So we're and like, we were, and he was given 120 years, and as it was in the days of Noah, are we being given 120 year warning from that? 
If we are, we're in the last of the last of the last of the last of days. That's what I'm talking about. Because not only that, here you have 100 years ago, it was the very day of Noah's flood was the Balfour Declaration, uh, November 2nd. That's unbelievable. I didn't know that either. I mean, uh, uh, just this is a remarkable information. And, and so so let's take a step back. So the formation or the rebirth of Israel as a nation is directly tied to the grace covenant of God, which is, which is, uh, is the, uh, you know, Noah's Ark. Ark, of course, was the Ark of Grace for Noah and his. And, sure. And so we have a we have a, 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 a similitude of that would be this 120 year period of the rebirth of Israel as a nation. And you're saying that on uh, November 2nd, 1917, was the Balfour Declaration, and that's also the same day that Noah entered in the Ark. Noah, well, yes, the day the flood began. Okay, the day the flood began. He got he got in there seven days earlier. I, I okay. Noah went in, God left the door open seven more days, and when he closed it, the flood began. So that's the day that the flood began. Unbelievable. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, well, I know, and there's more. Get okay. a load of this. Okay. Uh, uh, it was uh, 19, here we are, 2017. Well, guess what? Luther and the Reformation was 1517, exactly 500 years ago. Uh, that's right. That's right. That was the Reformation. Oh, my. I mean, all this, uh, folks, uh, Pastor Mark Biltz is with us, El Shaddai Ministries, leading authority when it, I say that because uh, there's a lot of folks that, you know, um, do do a good job in a lot of different areas. But when it comes to the constellation, we talk about Jesus said it, folks, Luke 21, 25, for there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves roaring and men's hearts will fail them for fear for looking after those things coming on the earth, okay? For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Uh, you know, Pastor Mark, we have record asteroids racing by the earth, a meteorite. We had 56 fireballs crash through the earth's atmosphere last night. We have an asteroid, a near-miss asteroid today. We have earthquakes breaking records we've had water turn blood red 31 times the last seven years uh not like it was in revelation but these are like precursors i mean uh, i mean there's like we're seeing signs everywhere i mean so let's walk us through this we're going to have this great solar eclipse it's going to be august 21st 33 days later we're going to have the great you know the great the two great wonders in heaven at revelation 12. tell us what you see in that prophetic sign well, that, that is really uh, huge because get a load of this. Uh, you have, you, you and I were talking the other day about Leviticus 12. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, when uh, the birth of a man child, yes. in Revelation, it talks about the birth of a man child. And Leviticus 12, it talked about if a woman gives birth to a man child. Okay. Right. Seven days. She's unclean, and then she continues in her purification for 33 days. And there's your 40 days. Right. Now, now, what's fascinating is that you have, if, if you were to go, let me see. I'm trying to think of uh, what I have here. Your, uh, September 23rd is when this Revelation 12 sign takes place. That's right. Okay? Yep. Seven days, she's unclean, and then she begins the purification process. Well, seven days from September 23rd is Yom Kippur. Four, there it is. It, there she, it is. She's clean. Now, Yom Kippur, she's beginning the, the she's clean, beginning the, she has 33 more days of purification. Right. And guess what that takes you to after 33 days? Yom Kippur. No, three days, seven days is Yom Kippur. Okay, okay, yes. Okay, so what's it bring you to in 33 days? November 2nd, the same day that Israel is presented at the Balfour Declaration as the baby is dedicated. Oh, I didn't see that one. Of course, I didn't know about that one. <laughs> it's November 2nd. Wow, so you're saying from uh, Yom Kippur. It's on... 33 days to November 2nd. Oh, my. So we got... Solar, from the solar flare, excuse me, from the solar eclipse 
to the great, const- the great wonder in heaven, the constellation, Revelation 12, that's 33 days. And then seven more days is Yom Kippur. But then from the constellation... Yom Kippur, and- 33 days, takes it to November 2nd. That's unbelievable. I know. That's unbelievable. You can- Again, folks, if you don't think God hasn't been... Look, everything... And think about this. It's not just the dates lining up, but he's lining up the stars to match the dates. He's, he's lining up the sun and the moon to match the dates, the solar the, the uh, solar eclipse, to match it. That means he has to put everything in rotation, orbiting, so that they hit exactly the right time that matches the events going on, on the Earth. This is if you, this should be absolute one thousand percent proof. That hey, are, are you are you ready for something else? That's are you, blowing? I, I, you're blowing my mind already, Pastor. Go ahead, I'm ready. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. <laughs> the, uh, first of all, let me begin with the, the UN and their International Day of Peace. Okay. Did you know that, do you remember 9-11-2001? Yes. 9-11-2001 is when they were supposed to have their International Day of Peace. But because of what happened at the UN, it got postponed until September 21st. And it was on that day that, that they decided to forever just keep it on September 21st. That's when the day was set. Okay. okay? Day of peace. That, that, it used to always be the third Tuesday. Okay. Okay. But then it got changed to always be September the 21st. Okay. Okay. We'll get a load of this. All right. Uh, uh, it says, I have a note here, the General Assembly of the UN declared uh, September 21st to be a day devoted, in, uh, devoted to strengthening the ideals of peace. Okay? All right. Now, okay. So here we have uh, this September 21st, okay, it happens to be the day. Well, guess what? September 21st, for the first time in 16 years, when they have their UN Peace Day, it's Rosh Hashanah, September 21st. That's going to be Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, 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 now, now watch. Now, watch, now get a load of this. Okay. The, uh, they have different themes every year. Yeah. The, the theme for 2014 was the right of peoples to peace. The theme for 2015 is partnership for peace, dignity for all. All right. Okay. 2016, the theme was the sustainable development goals, building blocks for peace. All right. Well, guess what the theme for 2017 is? Uh, 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 what? Together for peace and safety. Oh, oh. So uh, here we go. When I'm they say. Lessons five, one through four. Right. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes like birth pain. That's Rosh Hashanah. That's Rosh Hashanah. So here it is. The, 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 the United Nations were building up this plan that this. This September 21st should be when the nations come together in their mind to bring world peace, peace and safety, which is what Paul said in the book, in the Bible there in the New Testament. Exactly. And he said, when they say this, it's on Rosh Hashanah. And it's on Rosh Hashanah. Which is the birthday of the world. I know. So there's, I mean. It's telling, it says, together for peace, respect, safety, and dignity for all. And here they're declaring it. They're, and they're doing exactly what the Apostle Paul said they would do in the last days. And yeah. he said, when they say this, folks, then sudden destruction cometh. And you know, Jared Kirshner, the son-in-law, of course, of the president, who's trying, he was, he's been commissioned to work now on a, on a Middle East peace process. And, uh, and then, of course, we had this Temple Mount. We had this uh, killing of those two Israelis, the, uh, the metal detectors, and now everybody's all up in arms. And... And so it may get ugly. Is it possible it may get real ugly before they try to do something here? Or is it possible that they're going to make a – is the United Nations – I'm going to ask you a question. Is the United Nations in session during September 21st and during that – usually it's around that time of year. I didn't look. Well, they'd have to be. That's when they're having their, their meeting. Okay, so it's going to be – so you're going to have the world. You're going to have the U.N. up there in New York declaring peace and safety. And the Lord is saying, here comes sudden destruction. Exactly. Wow. 
and on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah. And, oh, by the way. The Feast of Trumpets, when the trumpets are being blown, saying, warning, warning. I, I'm going to grab a shofar right now if I have to. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, folks, get his book, Pastor Mark Built. There it is, El Shaddai Ministries. Put it up there, Brock, again on the screen. We've been putting it up there. Look, folks, God's, uh, God's Day Timer, Pastor Mark Built. It helps you understand. See, we shouldn't live our lives in the dark. I mean, we don't stumble in the dark. The Lord told us that we're the children of the light. Well, how are you the children of the light? Well, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, partly because it, one, just won't read the Bible, and two, uh, it's not being preached either. I'm, I'm going to say that carefully. And what I mean by that is some of the key elements to help people understand, to encourage you, to strengthen your faith, is to know the times and the seasons. And this is why, you know, if you read the Bible, when they, look, read Matthew 24. Look, look at Mark 13. Look at Luke 21. Look how Jesus, Yeshua, how he laid out the layman's plan for the end times. Then you can get into some in-depth studies. You can get over into Daniel and then some of the minor prophets, Hosea, Joel, you know, Zechariah, uh, Haggai, we just heard the pastor say. Then you get over in Revelation. It starts to come together. But if you don't, have any ideal, then you just don't know why this is happening. What's going on in the world? I don't understand it. Well, we don't understand it because we don't know the word. And so is, tell us a little bit about your book, God's Day Timer. How do you break it down and what will the people expect to learn from this? Well, the nice thing, it's a very practical book. People want to know how to keep these fees. Christians have been, aren't familiar with it. So we kind of explain how we do it. And we have a, a website people can come to to watch how we do it. And then they can start doing it. But basically, going back to Genesis 1.14, God has a day timer. Uh, the Muslims only use the moon. Uh, the Gentiles only use the sun. But God said when it came to his calendar, he wanted both the sun and the moon used. And that's the biblical calendar. That's what the Jews use. Yep. And so what I do, the first uh, several chapters, I laid the groundwork of how the Lord fulfilled all the spring feasts to the very day of his first coming. See, they were to be dress rehearsals. Yeah. And so every year for 1,500 years, Israel would rehearse the slaying of the Passover lamb on Passover because that's when Jesus was going to die on Passover. As a matter of fact, he was uh, bound to the cross. It says in Mark, the third hour of the day, that's nine in the morning. Well, that's the time of the morning sacrifice. As a matter of fact, God is so detailed. I mean, think about it. If you knew that your son was going to die, you're going to want to have everything coordinated at his funeral. Exactly. Okay. Well, same with the father. He had King David write the funeral hymns for his son a thousand years before he was born. And so here, what are wow. they singing at nine in the morning? At the very moment, they're binding the Passover lamb to the altar. They're binding Yeshua to the cross. And they're singing Psalm 118, binding the sacrifice with cords, even to the horns of the altar. That's what they're singing. Got over a million people singing. That's what wow. Yeshua here. He can hear that because, you know, I, I've been on – if you go to Golgotha or if you're up there in that area, if there was a million people uh, up on the Temple Mount singing that, uh, you would hear that. He could hear that while they were uh, nailing him to the cross. Yeah, even uh, if you remember, most people remember at the Last Supper, it says they sang a hymn and went over uh, to the Mount of Olives. Yes. Well, I know the worst of the song they sing, and people are shocked, but it's because I know – the, the Hebraic roots, they always sing Psalms 118 as the last hymn. Right. And so Psalms 118 was the last hymn. And so what were the words they were singing right before he was betrayed and rejected, uh, you know, and turned over uh, by Judas? Right. Well, that's Psalm 118. It says, this is the stone the builders have rejected. It's become the headstone of the <laughs> and, and so it's amazing. So I go through showing how the Lord fulfilled Passover on Passover, buried on unleavened bread, rose on first fruits. And most Christians don't know that Jews have been keeping Pentecost every year for 1,500 years. They were the first Pentecostals. They were. <laughs> very good. They were. And they and they have been uh, celebrating uh, the Feast of Pentecost. They still do. I know. There's so many Pentecostals that do, but the Jews still do. I, matter of fact, I've been, in, uh, I've been in Jerusalem the last two Feasts of Pentecost. Because I, I wanted to wow, be there. Wow. Yeah. I wanted to be there uh, this past year. I was just there in May. And I wanted to be there for the Feast of Pentecost, and I wanted to be there also for Jerusalem Day. It was around the same time. And Jerusalem Day, of course, that was the 50th anniversary of the reunification of Jerusalem as the 
holy city, the city of God. It says in the book of Psalms, you know, the city of the great king. Yeah. So I wanted to be there for that. And, this, and they were singing and dancing in the streets, Pastor Mark. They were, they were wrapping themselves in the Israeli flag. They were, they, uh, they were, uh, they, and so the Feast of Pentecost, all of it was unbelievable. And uh, so while we were there, we also met with Rabbi Yehuda Glick. You probably know. Oh, yeah, he's great. He, he's great. You know, he's an Orthodox rabbi. You've probably met him. Yeah. Uh, and so I interviewed him for our show, for a television show, and I and was sitting there with him. And I never seen a man. He said, he starts quoting, uh, you know, he looks into the camera and says, let me just speak right now. Let me just say to you, Ezekiel, the bones aren't dry anymore. Awesome. Let me say to you, Isaiah, the children are dancing in the street. In other words, yeah. and, and so I'm, <laughs> and I said, now hold it a minute, because uh, you, you're now proclaiming something that's coming over under our side over here. Let's get over here also into the New Testament. And uh, so there, look, there's a movement of God there. There's a tremendous movement of God there. Uh, we're in this end times, aren't we? Oh, my gosh, yeah. And, and so in the, the book, after I show how he fulfilled the spring feast to the very day, then I explain he'll fulfill the fall feast to the very day. The Feast of Trumpets will be fulfilled on the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur on Yom Kippur, Sukkot on Sukkot. So if you don't know God's day timer, if you don't know when these fall on our calendar, you're going to miss it. You won't be watching when we're supposed to be watching. Wow. Now, we're going to – so we're, we got the great solar eclipse, folks, the great American solar eclipse coming up on August 21st. We have the uh, Revelation 12 constellational alignment. Let's can we look at that for a second? There's two wonders in heaven that night. The first one's the woman. She's clothed with the sun. The moon's at her feet. The crown uh, has 12 stars. We know that Mercury, Mars, and Venus moves into that the constellation of Leo, and that makes the 12 stars. She gives birth. Jupiter's been in her womb. She gives birth to the man child. All I mean, this is unbelievable. But Pastor, help me out here because it also says that. And I saw another wonder. And begins to talk about this red dragon and the seven heads and ten horns. Can you can you uh, speak to that as well? Um, I'm not sure, but I, I do know the thing that is interesting is John is the one who saw it. It never said we were going to see it. And uh, but as a matter of fact, you can never see the uh, the sun and the moon on top of it at the same time. You know, or the sun. To have the Virgo, to see sun and stars isn't going to happen. So this is not necessarily a natural phenomenon uh, that we would ever see. Uh, see. Only John could see this. Uh, And so he's explained we're to be aware of it. We can know that it's happening. Right. But there's no way you could see this unless, unless there was some kind of a natural phenomenon that darkens the sky like an eclipse that won't be an eclipse right then you can see the stars like on august 21st if you're in the total solar eclipse path you can see stars yeah at that point you can see the sun the moon and all these stars because the sun has been darkened by the moon well you're right i mean i'm gonna be i'm gonna i'm gonna be at the uh I'm, i'm speaking at a conference that weekend in boise idaho it's called the hear the watchman conference there's several other Really good speaker is going to be there. Well, after we're done on the 21st, we're, we're taking a bus. All the people from the conference are going to go up to the Continental Divide. And we, uh, they, we have special glasses for you folks and, and that are coming to this conference. And we're going to look up and watch the eclipse from the Continental Divide. They say we should be able to see Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Because when that sun gets darkened, it will right. reveal. It's, you know, you're, they're always there. You just can't see them because of the sun. Uh, so I, I, you know, something you just brought something to my mind about the, the dragon and the rest of that in Revelation 12, and that is, it isn't really a constellational alignment like the woman. It's a spiritual revelation, and that's what you're saying. So. Yeah, John was being. It, it, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it seemed no, as if, it seemed as if John was being. It's being revealed to John what's coming upon the earth as it starts to talk about the the beast that he sees rising out of the sea in the next chapter even. So to your point, that's not an actual. Yeah, it doesn't mention that it's some kind of a constellation at all. Right, right. It's just a spiritual revelation of the time that we're in and the things that are coming upon the earth. Wow. It's it's unbelievable. And then the other thing, though, it's exactly seven years later 
the United States has another total solar eclipse, this time coming from the south to the north, <laughs> and it intersects the crosshairs of St. Louis, which is known as the Gateway City. It's known as uh, the Gateway City. Well, 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 hold it now. A gateway to what? I mean, <laughs> I, I think like this is the, the, the opening door. I mean, this is like God is trying to, to speak to right to the heart of America. It is. It's, it is right in the heartland. Folks, Carbondale, Illinois, if you live in that area, and I've talked about this before, that is where, you know, right there, St. Louis area with Carbondale. It's crossing right there, as, as the pastor said, the gateway city. And that's also that area. There's, there is actually some pyramids there that have been there. And also, um, the, it, it's known as Little Egypt. They call that area Little Egypt because uh, during the times of really harsh winters back in the 1830s, people had to come all the way down there to get grain. They said, we have to go down there sort of like Egypt. They named the area Little Egypt. There was already pyramids there. And Southern Illinois University, their team mascot is called the Salukis which are the dogs of Pharaoh. So we got a gateway. We got oh, a, I mean, we, <laughs> we got a mark here. We got a, you know, God sending a message and it looks like this first solar eclipse and the next one, there's a seven year period that God's going to be speaking to America. I think if we're here, definitely. I think God is just yelling and, uh, I think it's amazing going back to Haggai 1. His people were asleep and uh, was on the first of a lull, and, and they had no idea what time it was. Wow. And, and the church is kind of in that shape as well. I mean, we're just not really – I mean, I'm not saying everybody, but, you know, we, uh, we've got the Laodicea La- 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 church, and we've got the church of Philadelphia. It seemed like they're running parallel. Dr. Chuck Nisler talks about that. It's like they're running parallel at the same time. The great yeah. divide, you know, that's the separating, the great – apostasy you know paul said except there come a falling away the end shall not come so we're kind of living in that era aren't we no definitely definitely so uh, uh, tell us a little bit about uh pastor your uh, people can come to your church uh your ministry there at el shaddai ministries uh when's your services for folks that because we got a lot of folks that listen to us that, that are living in the seattle area Yes, uh, our congregation is really different because uh, we have almost every ethnic group that comes. We have about 25 Russians with headsets, and we have live translation for the Russians. We have about 20 South Koreans who come. We have people that come every week from China, from India, from Africa, from Europe, South America. We're doing it in Spanish right now, also our service. So we have every ethnic group, and then we have every denomination. We got Catholic and Baptists and Pentecostals and Lutherans and Methodists, you name it, everybody comes. <laughs> so it's quite a hodgepodge. Uh, but we meet on Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock, and you can go to our website, lkdiministries.us, if you want to come locally. We have about oh, 800 people who come uh, to our service locally. Yeah. But then our, our internet congregation is about 250,000. That's the number of people. That is, um, that, uh, watch the live stream every month. That is amazing. And that is absolutely amazing. And that, you know, God is just using the technology folks in these last days, isn't he, Pastor Mark? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, whatever, you know, God is going to use it for good. That is for sure. And uh, we're just so grateful that we, we literally have people from over 200 nations that come to our website. Yeah, it's, that couldn't have been done otherwise. Oh, I know. I, I'm I'm so stunned and shocked by uh, our online church and our online following here that I just can't believe it. The, the numbers are insane. And I said to myself when I, seven years ago, I said, "How in the world, God? What what do you want me to do? Turn the camera on and get a cup of coffee and grab a Bible and start talking about the end times?" <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what He told me to do. You know, I'm just a country preacher in the cornfields of Indiana. What, what, what are you doing? And the Lord specifically spoke to me, Pastor Mark, and said, "You need to look into the camera and you got to talk about what's going on around the world and how it relates to the biblical prophecy. These are the end times. Period." And I've been preaching for 33 years, but it's only the last seven that's been a complete focus on the fact that we're living in this time. And I think God is raising up a worldwide remnant church of believers. That's why you got folks from 200 nations coming to your website, because the Lord is, it, it, people are being fed, and they're, they're, they're learning, and they're being empowered 
by the powerful word of God. It's amazing. Uh, one more thing here. Let's just take another look at this, Pastor. You have, uh, if you take a look at what's going on, I think they say, FEMA says that on the uh, solar eclipse, there's going to be, they have declared it will be a national disaster, that the numbers of people will be on the highways and the little roads and the little towns all across the country, from Oregon to South Carolina, that they expect traffic jams, uh, crashes, uh, EMTs and, and, and police can't get through. I mean, they're already confessing a horrible confession, but they're confessing a national disaster upon America. Uh, what's your take on that? And, and why would they make such a confession? Well, I, you know, I think they're flat out worried. Think about it, how hot it is everywhere. If you have the people throwing cigarettes out on these grasses, think of the burn that would happen all over the United States as well. The place would be in flames if these people don't take care of wherever they're all massed together uh, as well. Wow. But, uh, I think it's a, a horrible confession, so to speak. But <laughs> at the same time, uh, in one sense, I'm, I think they should be getting prepared because who knows what could end up happening. Can we talk a little bit about just the, the North Korea thing? I just want to pick your brain on that one. I mean, this has become, I mean, the Russians have got troops built up on the North Korean yeah, border. That's, Tell us what you think of the North Korean crisis with America, North Korea, China, Russia, that whole thing. Yeah, not only that, Iran, North Korea and Iran are working together to try to get, you know, the nuclear weapons development. Uh, the thing is this, you're never going to have a peace, peace without a war. And the reason you don't have peace in the Middle East is because, just like with North Korea, things are on hold. Uh, and I think, prophetically, we're going to have a major war. Yeshua said there will be wars and rumors of war. Yes. Well, uh, I, I basically think that we have a major war coming. Uh, and so that's why we need to be prayed up. Amen. Uh, because I think we definitely could see, uh, you know, the North Korean leader try to pre-launch an EMP attack or some kind of attack. Uh, I think we're just a hair trigger away from uh, nuclear war all around the world. And that's why God's people need to be praying and they need to make sure they're ready. Amen. Amen. And, you know, the, I noticed here recently the president of the United States has been having evangelical preachers and uh, uh, in the White House. Black study. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that a, that's yeah, a that's beautiful a thing. Study. I think that's incredible. Oh, I, it's an answer to, that's an answer to prayer. I don't know how long the church has been praying, God, send revival back to Washington. We need, we, we need prayer in the White House. And, you know, we know that Governor, uh, now Vice President Mike Pence, he was our governor here in Indiana. We knew he was a very strong, devout Christian, a born-again yeah. born Catholic who, yeah. who, you know, and just solid as a rock. And, and uh, so it was, I think, President Trump, when he chose him, as his running mate, I know a lot of folks didn't know much about him, but we knew here, Indiana, we had a uh, $2 billion surplus. He was a very good conservative, uh, done a great job running our state, but more importantly is his relationship with God. And I think it's truly helping President Trump. I mean, you can imagine the pressure Trump's under. I mean, I mean, I just don't even know how he could sleep at night. Um, so he needs our prayers. And this world's in trouble. You're well, right. I, I think... Yeah, I totally agree with you, and I can't help but think of going back to Jonah and Nineveh. It was the king of Nineveh, uh, or Syria, who led people. And uh, here, this is happening at the same time as Jonah, and wow. I think it would be great if, if Trump and the cabinet would really lead America into a, the, a time of repentance. Amen. And maybe this will happen, and maybe that's what, you know, uh, when you see uh, – you see this going on. They're laying hands on him and praying for him in the Oval Office and, and, and all kinds of different things happening there. Maybe this is what will happen. This is, at least I know for sure it's my prayer. I'm sure it's yours and the body of Christ everywhere. That that's what we need to do is, is uh, pray, really pray earnestly, you know, and, uh, and believe God. Believe God. America plays a major yeah, I, role. You know, the, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of times the Christians – you know, mock the sinner saying they need to repent, but actually God always begins judgment in the house of God, and it's the people of God that need to lead the nation in repentance. Amen. Amen. 
Well, Pastor, this has been uh, uh, this has been an honor. First of all, I appreciate you very much coming on and being on our show. And and really, I really want to sit. I want to meet you in person. So uh, I got to figure out to get, get get that done somewhere. Uh, I think it'd be great to uh, to get together, maybe do a television show. Uh, you know, interview you for the, our show or whatever. Just meet you somewhere. But I'm really, really, really. Oh, I would I would love to meet you. What city are you in? I'm in uh, West Lafayette, Indiana, just north of Indianapolis. Well, yeah, we're definitely going to have to try to get together somehow. Sometime. Yeah, all right. We'll do it. We'll do it. And uh, we'll love to have you back on the show again. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Again, your your website is El Shaddai Ministries. We've been putting it on the screen continually. And, folks, you can also get his books. He has them there right on the website, you know, and uh, just be blessed. Uh, be blessed from the powerful word of God that Pastor Mark brings. Uh, it's, 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 it's a right now word, as Perry Stone would say. It's a right now word, okay? <laughs> there was ever a time. Thank you, Pastor, for being with us today. I appreciate you, and, and I hope all the people that come to our website go to your website and listen to the great things you have to say. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And God bless. Shalom. Hey, bless you too, Bob. Bye-bye. Hello. <laughs> Pastor Mark Biltz, folks, I mean, you know, I, I, I just think about it for a minute and just say, what a fascinating guy. And I'm sorry the Internet has really been under attack this whole interview. I tell you, the devil did not want this thing to post. But here's the good news. Even though it was cutting in and out on you guys, it was still being recorded by YouTube. And so when the archive posts, and once it gets fully processed and post, you can go back and watch this whole program and you won't even miss a beat. So it may be frustrating at the moment when it was live. One thing is that we had no problem with Blog Talk Radio, so there you can listen to that as well, and some of you have been listening. But if you that are watching right now at YouTube or, or Periscope uh, or over at New Livestream or Roku, go back to YouTube's archive in a couple hours uh, after we go off the air, go back in a couple hours when it's fully processed and then go watch it again and it will be flawless. And that's the good part. Uh, And Brock's been in there. He's done his best. He's been putting all the graphics up there, everything you need, because he knows that it is still being recorded by YouTube. And that's, that's one thing we're happy about, but we're sad for what happened. We can't control it. Matter of fact, it's not our, it's not our studio or our internet connection. It's that full, I mean, highest level you can get. This has to do with the um, whatever. It's, it's the spirit of darkness working. It, it's um, the NSA attacking us. Uh, who knows exactly why uh, the interference came. But we're not going to be defeated. And I, so I share that with you so that you should tell others about this pro. There's Brock. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he's in there doing the best he can. All right. Amen. Folks, are you saved? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Have you accepted Christ as your savior? Because this is the most important thing in your life. The most, did you hear? There's no way that these dates, this solar eclipse is tied to the Bible because it's happening on the day that Moses got the Ten Commandments. It's happening on the same day that Jesus went in the wilderness to pray for 40 days and 40 nights. It's happening on the same day that Jonah went into Nineveh and said, "You have, but repent, for God will destroy the city in 40 days. My brand new DVD, The Total Eclipse of the Sun, breaks down this day. Historically, solar eclipses has happened. He brought up one already. It, and he brought up two or three of them, actually, but it covers the solar eclipse that have happened uh, historically and ties it into the Revelation 12 sign uh, in the constellations coming up September 23rd. It's a powerful DVD with a full presentation, uh, PowerPoints, and all of the really great research Sister Heidi did and, uh, and, and the presentation professionally put together. You will really enjoy this. It's available at my website. Go there, the total eclipse of the sun. Get your order in now. I want to ship it to you, uh, and I want you to receive 
a powerful word. It is truly important because I know, first of all, it's going to bless you. It's going to bless you, but it's also going to be a great tool for you to maybe show some other members of your family or friends, and they can sit down and watch this with you, and I guarantee it would touch them and help them understand. Lucifer is trying to eclipse the Son of God. He's trying to block your view from the Messiah. But believe me, it's only temporarily for Christ's light will come out on the other side. And all of that, I have, a, I have a, now besides all the historical and biblical and prophetic events that are all into this powerful DVD, the message that I preach from the word of God is so revealing. Well, I, I had never seen it before in 33 years of ministry till I started reading and studying this subject. And there it was, a powerful comparison with Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's why we named it the Total Eclipse of the Sun. Matter of fact, I'll be preaching this message in here at the Hear the Watchman conference on Saturday night. Uh, and uh, it will be a blessing, I guarantee it, uh, that night. Now, if you, there's still seats available if you want to come to the Hear the Conference, Hear the Watchman conference in Boise, Idaho. Uh, there is still Seats and rooms available if you call there. You can still get in. Matter of fact, there's even a one-day pass. If you just want to come for the one-day pass, that's available, or just, or just get registered. But I think you'll really be blessed. I think you really will. I wonder how many of you are listening right now or watching right now have given your life to Jesus Christ. See, these are the last days. And when, when you look at what Pastor Mark was just saying, I wouldn't want to take a chance on going past this 40-day period. I, I, I just wouldn't, okay? Matter of fact, I wouldn't take a chance on waiting until tomorrow morning because the Bible says you have no promise of tomorrow for the evil today is sufficient thereof. But I have headphones on here. We're going to play a song and give you an opportunity uh, to accept the Lord as your Savior. Uh, I just tell you what, I would not wait. You type in the chat room right now, I want to be saved. And uh, you just type in the chat room, I want to be saved. And we'll type, I'll write your name down. We'll pray with you. We'll help you find Jesus Christ. This is the time. This is the moment. This is the moment. Call upon the name of the Lord. Just type, I want to be saved. Don't wait. The Lord is coming soon. The signs are everywhere. Something biblical is going on with the sign of the second coming of Christ. Are you ready? Amy. Maxi wants to be saved. Praise God. This is your moment. Rusty Wood wants to be saved. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeshua is calling Jesus of Nazareth. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't put it off. 
Call on the name of the Lord. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Just type, I want to be saved. That's right, Billy Nitrain. Just type it. I want to be saved. Come as you are. That's right, Jesus lover. upon the name of the Lord. Just type, I want to be saved. Church, pray. You're right, Julie. There are people on the fence right now. I mean, Stephen, God bless you. Stephen wants to be saved. Don't put it off, folks. Don't put it off. This is the moment. This is the hour. This is the day. This is the moment. This is the day. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Make that decision today. Call upon the name of Jesus. Could this be the last altar call? Maybe. Major attacks on the... uh, on the internet today. Boy, the devil was mad. But he doesn't win. He don't win. He can't win. He's already been defeated. He's already been defeated. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Pray with me. We're going to pray right now. Billy wants to be saved. And I know there's others out there. The, of course, the Internet has been under attack all in this last hour. We know that Amy, Maxie, Rusty Woods, Stephen and Billy, and I'm sure many others listening on radio, listening at YouTube, I mean, uh, uh, Blog Talk Radio, and everywhere else. Would you just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I need salvation. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God, forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Wash me. Lift me out of the mari clay, and put my feet on your solid rock. Because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe that Yeshua rose from the dead 
that he's ascended to heaven and that he's coming back. And I want to be ready, Lord. I want my name written in the Lamb's book of life. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus' precious name. Praise God. Are you serious? I'm telling you, it's so good. It is so good. I want to welcome you to the family. Welcome to the family. All right. Welcome to the family of God. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and uh, the angels are rejoicing in heaven. They're doing cartwheels up there. I mean, are you serious? And they're building a, they're going to start on, on your mansion. Oh, no doubt. See, you, you see, you can't earn salvation. You have to receive it. It's free. You just receive it and accept Christ in your life. I want to thank all of you so, so so sorry. Yeah, I'll blow the show for I'll blow it. Let's see if I can. I wanted to when Pastor Mark was, uh, I, he had me. Oh, I'm trying to get better at that. I, I mean, are you serious? I'm just some hillbilly kid in the cornfields of Indiana. I'm trying. I know the Lord's going to, Gabriel's going to blow that trumpet. When the last trump of God shall sound, and time, of course, shall be no more. Us that are alive remain and be caught up forever to be with the Lord. So shall we ever be, Lord. The dead in Christ are going to rise first. <laughs> so you want to be sure you're ready. Amen. Now, I want to encourage you to get baptized. Find a pastor or a Messianic congregation uh, or a church somewhere in that community you live, and, and uh, if you need help finding one, send an email right here to converts.2016 at gmail.com. Converts.2016 at gmail.com. Or if you want a Bible, we'll send it to you for free. Send an email to zd zero one at hotmail. Dot com, Or go to my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com and click on the prayer wall. You may want to leave a prayer request or a praise report. Or you may want to request a Bible, okay? Or maybe one of these uh, anointed prayer cloths for healing, okay? And, of course, there are people that are very ill that we send blankets to and, 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 and chemo caps for those that are very, very sick. Amen. So let me just say to you uh, that God loves you. Uh, it is unbelievable the time we're living in. It's Jesus. He's coming back. We couldn't do these things without this amazing online church. You, the amazing, the amazing online church of believers. And because of your faithful partners, the Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries, people have been saved all week long. I mean, there were 67 uh, Wednesday, I mean, between the two programs. And, and look, oh, my, God's getting his number. This is what the Bible said in the last days. I'll pour out his, the Lord said, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men of dream dreams. Young men of sea vision, and upon my hand maidens and servants, I pour out my spirit, thus saith the Lord. And so thank you. So as you're giving today, I'm, can I pray for everybody that's giving today right now? Let me do that because if you're giving, please, my address is on the screen. This is the time. This is the time. Uh, you can write us at paulbegleyprophecy.com, and there's the address, 1048-B, Sagamore Parkway. West, and of course, that's Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. That's 47906. 
hit the easy button, as uh, Billy Night Train would say, and uh, God will bless you. He will. In the, Jesus said, "Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, run it over, shall men give into your bosom." And so the Lord said, "I will supply every need." He said he'd supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, okay? So we thank the Lord for that. Uh, you may want to give right now before I pray. I'm going to pray for everyone that's given all week long, right up to the midnight hour tonight. I want to say that I want to cover that in the blood of Christ and ask God to, to, to multiply in your life. You know, the Lord said he loves a cheerful giver. And as you give, and as you've been faithful, as the Lord speaks to your heart, thank you. You're making a difference in lives around the world. Can I pray for you and your family? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, some are actually going to put, they're writing a letter. Somebody's just pulled out an envelope. And they're, so as they put their checks and money orders in there, as they put their prayer requests in there, Lord, and some are giving right now online and they're putting a prayer request in that note God, there are people who have given all week. I want, the Lord, you to bless their homes. Lord, I know your word already says you will. You said you'd bless their families. God, you would bless their jobs. Many of them are business owners. Bless their, their businesses, Lord. Uh, break down every barrier. Satan, take your hands off God's property. Lord, you said, Lord, if we bring our tithe and offering unto you, our first fruits, you said, prove me. See if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing you won't have room to contain. God, I'm so glad you gave us that word that even though this is the year, 2017, the year of great chaos for the world, Lord, you said it was a year of great blessing for the body of Christ. And boy, we've been hearing it from people, partners of our ministry, how you've blessed them, Lord. I want to thank you for that, how you have blessed them and blessed them and protected them. In times of good and bad, in trouble. Oh, thank you, Lord. You're just doing it right now. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I, God is doing something right now. He wants to bless somebody that he's saying, if you'll trust me, praise God. If you'll trust me, I'll show you that I am the Lord thy God, Jehovah Jireh, the provider. Thank you, Lord. And so, God, I just want to thank you right now. Bless every home. Every family represented here, Lord, bless all of these that have been faithful, Lord. Touch them, Lord. Increase their goods and, and help them, Lord, uh, in their, in their, keep them free from sickness, Lord, and, and build a hedge around them and just bless them and their families, and their, keep, all of them, Lord. Save their children. Save their grandchildren. Save their husbands. Save their wives. Touch them, Lord, I pray. Thank you for your, for your promises in the word of God. And we give you the, the glory, Lord, give you all the honor, give you all the praise in Jesus' name. And the people said, amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You can write us as he puts us on the screen and you can uh, just trust the Lord. Have a great, great day today. Wasn't that a great? I, I'm sorry the technological problems, but a great message, a great interview with Pastor Mark Bill. Again, fade on the archives if you uh, on YouTube. Give it time to fully process, and then go back and you can watch it, and it, and you won't miss a thing. It'll be right there. Pretty well, will be almost all of it be right there. Okay, so it'll be good. I love all you guys. You guys are awesome. Now I'm going into the Sabbath. All right, and I'm going to take a little time off this evening and tomorrow, and so. Uh, Heidi and I need to do that because we uh, we really do work as hard as we can. Um, and we have such great, amazing online church. I want to thank all of you. You guys are faithful. I want to thank all the moderators for their hard work. And every person, I want to thank those of you who contribute with uh, with the Bibles and, 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 and blankets and things. I want to thank you for being faithful in your giving. And if you want to join the Paul Bakley School of Prophecy, please do that. You got time. Get registered today. Put a down payment on it right now. Get your tuition in and get ready. We're going to be ordering the textbooks on September 16th. So September 15th is the deadline. Get registered. Get registered. And uh, get ready. You're going to be blessed. 
that you are truly going to be blessed. God will inspire you in this first semester that uh, you won't, you won't, you'll just say I'm a brand new person because the Bible is going to come to life. And, and oh, it's, in this first uh, semester, we want God to speak to you in your heart. We want the spirit of the Lord to flow out of you. And it happens in the word. I'll be back, guys. See you guys Sunday night live. Sunday morning will be live from Community Gospel Baptist Church. And then Sunday night live, my guest, BP Earthwatch, will be with us on Sunday night. What a great week, Pastor Mark Bilt, uh, Pastor uh, Steve Leidig, live on location in Hyman, L.A. Marzulli. Uh, we've just had, I, I can't remember what all we've done. We've had a great week. God bless you guys. I'll see you guys uh, again on Sunday. God bless. Are you serious?